What? No paleontology? Well, today, we are taking a break from talking about prehistoric extinct zoology, and in this video, I am starting a new series about speculative zoology centered on cryptozoology, or the study of undiscovered animals. Sorta of harkening back to some of my older, non-prehistoric videos like the dragon video. I am approaching all this stuff with a skeptical method grounded in biological sciences, and has nothing to do with magic or spirits and whatnot. We are examining these cryptids as real animals, real living organisms, and examining the validity of these claims in eyewitness reports. I will go very in-depth and research these claims. If such an animal could exist, and give a final scientific verdict based solely on scientific evidence and logic. Cryptozoology is the study of yet-to-be-discovered organisms based on eyewitnesses, legends, lore, and sometimes even physical evidence. And unfortunately, the area studied by most scientists and most of the general populace is laughed at for its unscientific and unbelievable theories, and just downright dumb approaches to legends and sightings. And often, these are deserved. Many nonsensical theories that go against all scientific logic about Lazarus taxon and impossible things have appropriately made cryptozoology a thing of ridicule and mythology, not reality. But now, I want to try to revolutionize cryptozoology, sorta, and make a video series with a different, more modernized approach to this area of study where we actually apply, to the best of my abilities, scientific accuracy in evaluations with a skeptical approach grounded on logic, physics, evolution, biology, and all other areas of science to help give us a new perspective on legends about yet-to-be-discovered living things. I will approach these topics basically in the same way as they are approached in Darren Nish's, C.M. Kozman's, and John Conway's Cryptozoological Icon, whose book inspired this video series. These videos will be about evidence and scientific reasoning based on physics and biology, not pseudoscience and definitely not magic. So if you don't want to see the actual scientific likelihood that these organisms exist based on collected studies from various scientific sources of information, then probably don't watch this video, or this series in general. This is Cryptid Profile, or maybe just scientifically plausible, uh, I don't know yet. Yes, the infamous Mothman. Mothman is a cryptid, or an animal whose existence has been suggested, but not discovered or documented by the scientific community. Mothman is a very interesting creature, as it was allegedly seen only for a short period of time, and seems to be more of a product of misinformation and media hype than an actual living organism. I'll be using a lot of information from the famous documentation of these sightings in The Mothman Prophecies by John Neal, who personally interviewed many of the witnesses in 1975, ten years after the event, and the book the Mystery Chronicles More Real Life X-Files by Joe Nickel, who investigated many of these claims years later. All sightings of Mothman in contrast to popular belief happened between November 15, 1966 and December 15, 1967, where the alleged sightings ended abruptly with the collapse of the Silver Bridge. All sightings were seen in the Point Pleasant City area of West Virginia. The first confirmed sighting was reported to police on November 15, 1966, at 11 p.m., and was published in the Point Pleasant Register November 1966, the day after, titled, Couples See Man-Sized Bird creature something. FYI, that's an amazing name for a newspaper article. The couples were driving at 11 p.m. at night and were in the TNT area, an abandoned ammunition plant from World War II. The first physical description of Mothman in this newspaper was by the couples, Roger and Linda Scadbury and Steve and Mary Millette. Allegedly, they saw a quick glimpse of the creature while driving in their car on the dark, twisted roads. Roger and Linda drew sketches of the creature that were basically identical. The creature was described as a winged man, seven feet tall, shaped like a man but bigger, with glowing red eyes. It walked on sturdy legs with a stiff gait, and when it took flight and seemed to follow them, it wasn't flapping its wings. They also reported it squeaked like a big mouse. And in contrary to other alleged sightings, the original was white. Not gray, not black. Quote from the couple, Large flying man with ten foot wings followed their car while they were driving in an area outside of town, known as the TNT area. The wingspan of the creature was reported as ten feet in length, with the body standing at seven feet. The animal possessed two large eyes that glowed. 
They were about two inches in diameter and six inches apart, according to John Neal's, interviewed in the Mothman Prophecies. And it had no mouth and no head. The creature started on the ground with its wings folded up against its body and basically just stared at them. And after driving away, the creature took off and started flying. Apparently, the creature flew up to 100 miles per hour, as it was able to keep up with the couple's 1957 Chevy without flapping its wings. Directly after allegedly seeing the creature, Roger and Linda went directly to the Mason County Courthouse and told their story to Deputy Miller Halstead. Halstead stated that, I've known these kids for all their lives. They'd never been in any trouble, and they were really scared that night. I took them seriously. Deputy Miller drove to the TNT area, but was unable to find any evidence of the sighting. The other couple, Mary and Stephen, apparently made no sketches, and they didn't appear to make any statements to the police. The next morning, Sheriff George Johnson called a press conference. Local reporters interviewed the four witnesses. Miss Mary Heyer sent the story out to the AP Wire, and that evening, the bird was the chief topic at supper tables throughout the Ohio Valley. Some anonymous copy editor gave it its name, spun off from the Batman comic book character. Mothman. The story was an instant hit and was greatly hyped by the news and media. There were no other sightings reported before this. But then after, almost as a response to the newspaper's description, many other reports flooded in. Unfortunately, most of these reports only name unidentified unnamed people, so the truth behind these alleged sightings is unclear. And most unfortunately, a bunch of these claims only came from one source, John Neal's Mothman Prophecies, and nowhere else. So again, the validity of these claims is unclear. Three days after the newspaper report and the first sighting, according to John Neal, two unnamed Point Pleasant firemen also went to the TNT area, saw a huge creature, but were positive that it was definitely a bird. Another unconfirmed sighting was made by five grave diggers in the middle of the night, so they spotted a large, flying bird-like creature that, in contrast to the first sighting, was brown in color. Many other unnamed witnesses described it as a headless humanoid with shining red eyes on the body where the chest would be, although one unnamed woman reported it had a funny little face. Most descriptions of Mothman described it as black or brown, not as white as seen in the original. According to the county sheriff George Johnson, a contractor in the area, Newell Partridge, told Johnson that when he aimed a flashlight at the creature in nearby fields, its eyes glowed like bicycle reflectors, implying that the eyes didn't as much glow as they reflected light with the red eye effect. Most sightings seem to be copies on the first. A small grouping of people in the wilderness at night, in an unpopulated area, partially sees a creature in the dark. That's all. No evidence. Mothman sightings supposedly stopped with the collapse of the Silver Bridge and the death of 46 people, resulting in people believing Mothman was somehow correlated. I for one believe there is no correlation whatsoever, and the Mothman sighting stopping was just a self-fulfilling prophecy. The bridge collapse was caused by corrosion, not Mothman, nor is there any evidence to say that it was involved at all. Again, his disappearance could just be a self-fulfilling prophecy where the news says he disappeared, and no longer are people going out in the woods looking for Mothman. Ten years later, Mothman got a greater audience with the publishing of The Mothman Prophecies, a book by journalist and UFO supporter John Neal. The book documents many of the reports of Mothman and is one of the few direct sources of information on Mothman. Unfortunately, the book came ten years after the phenomena, and people might have forgotten gotten some of the elements, take that how you will. In short, Mothman is a large nocturnal flying bipedal animal, between six and seven feet tall, with two large red eyes, which possessed eye shine, and a ten foot wingspan. It was never reported to have a head, and only seems to only have two eyes in the center of its chest. It never looked like this. Well, in short, no. For a number of reasons, it seems highly unlikely that Mothman exists, or ever existed at all. All the scientific evidence seems to point to Mothman simply being a case of misidentification and media hype, and I think this is all just a misunderstanding. Let me explain. Like Bigfoot, which at least has some physical evidence, Mothman's existence is entirely based on eyewitness testimony, and when confirming that something is physically real, you need physical evidence of some sort. That's just logic. Let's just see all the physical evidence of Mothman. 
We don't have any pictures. We don't have any remains. We don't have any poop. We don't have any footprints. We got nothing. Everything about Mothman is entirely based on witnesses, which is problematic when proposing the existence of an organism. Mothman's appearance definitely pays a resemblance to a known animal and a group of animals. Its seemingly headless body, two large reflecting eyes which appear to be on the center of its chest, its large folding wings, and two-legged stance, and these details definitely describe a type of owl. All these traits can't really be anything but an owl that has just been misidentified and over-exaggerated. The eye shine which produce those seemingly glowing eyes is extremely common in owls. A few owls in the region are capable of doing this, the barn owl having weak eye shine, the great horned owl having medium, and the extremely mothman looking barred owl having extremely strong eye shine when light is pointed into its eyes. If you point a light at these owls, their eyes will reflect red. Mothman definitely was a type of owl for this purpose. And to add to all these similarities from owls to Mothman, a man named Aza Henry between 1966 and 1967, during what is now called the Mothman Fad, apparently shot and killed a Mothman, and it actually turned out to be identified as a snowy owl. Although only two feet tall, a newspaper dubbed it a giant owl due to its wingspan of nearly five feet. In Point Pleasant, Mothman skeptic Joe Nickel was able to view the mounted specimen and speak to Mr. Henry's grandson, David Piles. A taxidermist, Piles, who was very skeptical of Mothman, told Joe his grandfather always stated that the Mothman fad ended after he shot the bird. Now, snowy owls aren't common in the region, and this one was uncommonly large. It is highly likely that this large white animal with glowing eyes was seen by Roger and Linda, and the other couple. Not to mention the TNT area where the first account was taken is a very, very populated area for owls of many species. The TNT area is surrounded by the McClintic Wild Management Area and was back then and now a bird sanctuary. Indeed, Stephen Warner, who works for the West Virginia Munitions to produce five caliber ammunitions in the TNT compound, said there were owls all over the place. So, not only does Mothman look like an owl, but he was also spotted in an area where a high population of owls lived too. I'm not saying it was owls, but it was owls. Mothman seems highly likely it was nothing but a species of owl. Maybe the rare, uncommonly large snowy owl that wandered into the region and was shot and killed the same year. Bad conditions. My second point is that all these eyewitness accounts, which is the only evidence that supports Mothman's existence, aren't really that credible, and some are even completely fabricated. There are many reasons for why these eyewitness testimonies shouldn't be taken as a discovery of an undiscovered large flying animal. The first problem with these eyewitness accounts is that every single account had bad conditions for identification. Now, I don't think the original sighting was a fake at all. Based on Deputy Miller's account, it seems like the teenagers really saw something. But if that something really was a seven foot tall monster, I'm going to argue and put those on poor conditions. A. First off, every single sighting took place at night. This proposes a problem as the human eye has extremely poor nocturnal vision. Due to this, the brain tends to make errors in describing things in the dark. Skeptic Joe Nickel again conducted a test using cardboard cutouts in the dark and have people drive by in cars estimate how tall some were. All of the estimates overestimated a considerable amount. The brain tends to not be a great eyewitness to things in the dark, and when you apply this to the first case of Roger and Linda, whose only source of light was the car headlights on an extremely desolate and dark road, you can tell that they probably didn't have the best sight of what was really there. B. Let's take the original sighting for example. It was seen while they were driving. Roger and Linda never told how fast they were going, but normally when traveling on desolate country roads, most people go at least 40 miles per hour. Now again, this causes a problem. When going that fast, you don't really get the best view of objects standing still. Roger and Linda would have had a horrible and poorly seen view of whatever was truly there. Not only was it extremely dark with no sources of light other than the car headlights, and remember, this was in 1966 when high beams weren't invented yet, but they also were going at a moderate speed. They wouldn't have gotten a really good look at Mothman, and the fact they started traveling over 100 miles per hour and still were able to see Mothman is definitely an over-exaggeration. When you think about it, Roger and Linda and others only saw an extremely quick flash of an image, and their mind made up the rest. It is extremely likely that they saw something familiar, like an owl, very, very quick and exaggerated the size, 
When traveling that fast and in the dark, such poor conditions could cause something that normally looks two to three feet tall appear much, much larger and more threatening. The first Mothman sightings and possibly later ones definitely can be choked up to bad conditions which cause the misidentification of known animals due to the eyewitnesses only catching a partial glimpse of the creature. I simply believe Roger and Linda saw an owl on the side of the road, reflecting the headlights, causing eye shine, and they simply over-exaggerated the size by driving fast and not getting a good look in the dark. And supposedly chasing the creature was just the owl taking off and confusing the teenagers once again, over-exaggerating the situation. C. Now another important factor to take into account in all these sightings is that basically all came after the highly publicized and highly reported original Roger and Linda sighting. There were no sightings reported before and seemingly after the news report everybody has seen Mothman now, with supposedly just under a hundred sightings all of which seeming to have similar conditions to Roger and Linda's sighting. This sudden craze of Mothman sightings is now called the Mothman Fad and refers to the time when Mothman sightings came through in the dozens. Overnight, Mothman became a legend and icon of the town, sparking some actual public interest in this otherwise desolate community. If you don't get what I'm saying here, I'm trying to say that most, if not all, the other sightings were nothing but fakes or fraud, copycats of the original. The fact accounts started to pour in only when Mothman got famous seems suspicious to me and I bet a lot of other people. Mothman really only brought good to Point Pleasant and has given the town notoriety over the years. Today, there is an annual Mothman Festival with a Mothman pancake eating competition that brings to great tourism to the town. Frickin' Mothman pancakes! And when someone asks you if you saw Mothman and you get a chance to be famous, if you say yes, heck, I would probably do the same if I lived in an extremely small town with a population under 4,000 in 1966 and 1967. To most of the inhabitants, this was their only chance to be famous and get recognized. I bet many of the other eyewitness accounts after the original sighting were just pleased for attention. And that leads me to my next section. There were hoaxes regardless following the original report in 1966. The spring of 1967 brought many, many pranksters and hoaxers, such as some construction workers putting red flashlights on helium balloons, a private plane with a prankster pilot gliding back and forth across the river for several nights to frighten locals. On one occasion, the pilot came so close to crashing into the hilltop, he suddenly had to force cut his engines on. Several other people, half a dozen according to a local resident of Point Pleasant, claim responsibility for dressing up or flat-out fabricating reports. Many of these teenagers. And according to Charlie Klein, manager of a local music store, thinks many, many, many people were jumping onto the bandwagon, confirming my previous statement in the previous section about people just wanting attention. And to simply add to more reasons why Mothman seems unlikely to exist, there are many, many inconsistencies on the descriptions of Mothman. The original describes Mothman as white, while later ones describe Mothman as brown, gray, and black. Another varying detail is the description of Mothman's eyes. Some of the original reports claim the eyes glowed red and when light was shined on them, the glowing stopped. While later ones say the opposite, with light reflecting off the eyes when shined with a light, and the eye shine was red like an owl's. And some other reports say Mothman didn't have a face while others did. I know these are small variations, but slight changes such as inconsistencies in color and appearances can allow you to see if people saw the same thing. And simply by changing colors between sightings, I think these people aren't seeing the same thing. Such inconsistencies allow police to tell if someone is telling the truth or not. Same can be applied to Mothman. And probably the strongest problem for Mothman's existence as a real organism, simply put, that it is structurally, physically, and anatomically impossible. The proportions given in feats done by Mothman are simply scientifically impossible. First up, Mothman's wing-to-body ratio is all messed up. With all medium-sized to large flying tetrapods, the rule of thumb is in order to fly, the wingspan must be around three times as long as the body length. For every inch of the body, the wingspan should have around three inches. This will give you a pretty good rough estimate of the wingspan and it is common with all medium to large flying vertebrates. And it seems likely at a certain size, no matter how heavy you are, it is impossible for an organism to fly without this ratio. Let's just test it out. Snowy owls have an average length of 21 to 23 inches. Multiply that by three and you have five and a quarter feet long wingspan. 
An actual wingspan? 5 feet in length. Albatrosses have a body length of 3.85 feet. Multiply that by 3 and you got an 11.5 wingspan. The actual wingspan? 11.6 foot wingspan. Barn owls have an average length of 37 centimeters. Multiply that by 3 and you got 111 centimeters. The actual wingspan? 110 centimeter wingspan. The flying fox. Body length is 12 inches times 3 is 24 or 3 feet. Reality? 5 feet. Close. And finally, the prehistoric Argenta avis, the largest bird capable of flight in all of recorded history, and as far as size, the closest bird in size to Mothman. Argenta avis was about 6 feet in length. Times that by 3 and you got 20 foot wingspan. The actual wingspan is 23 feet, meaning in this case, like the flying fox, the wingspan to body ratio exceeds the 1 to 3 ratio, and is more like 1 to 4. Basically, with almost every estimate, you will get within a few feet of the real wingspan, and most of the time with larger birds, the ratio is above 1 to 3 and is more like 1 to 4. This ratio can be applied to basically all flying organisms that are large in size except pterosaurs, which actually have a much larger wingspan to body ratio, but that's a story for another day. And basically gives you kind of a close rough estimate to the actual wingspan. Now when we use this wingspan ratio on Mothman though, we run into problems. Mothman was between 6 to 7 feet. We should get around somewhere at the very least 21 foot wingspan, and Argentavis seems to suggest that the wingspan would need to be larger just based on the shorter length but longer wingspans, so I'd say the length would need to be just around 23 feet. But when we look at all the eyewitness accounts, they all give us around 10 foot wingspan, over 2 times less than the actual ratio. Now, this is important to note that this is not a few feet off. This is over double less than what should be scientifically and anatomically required for an organism of such size to fly. Meaning if Mothman existed, it definitely couldn't fly with those wimpy, disproportionate wings. Mothman can't fly, it's not possible with those wings. Simply based on almost every flying vertebrate in history, Mothman would need to have much, much longer wings to fly, even in the best conditions. And even with that corrected wingspan, Mothman probably wouldn't be able to fly. Recent studies using humans of similar height and synthetic wings of similar length use the same ratio. A human-sized animal would still really have a problem with flight. Mothman would have to weigh a very, very small amount just to get off the ground, definitely a lot less than a human. In contrast, the bulky, sturdy legs described on Mothman by Linda. Mothman would have to weigh a considerable amount less than all birds just to fly with corrected wings, and it's just downright impossible for him to fly with the wings actually described. And lastly, the most unbelievable thing about Mothman is that it has only been seen a few times between a one year span and never again in all of history. To suggest a large aerial vertebrate population has existed in the highly developed eastern coast of America and humans never discovered the remains, eggs, poop, or any physical evidence is simply preposterous. If Mothman exists, we definitely would have found evidence of it by now. It's as simple as that. The amount of resources to, required to keep such a large animal alive, the amount of members to sustain an even small population, and just the sheer amount of humans and development in the area would be n noticed by humans. Due to all these problems with Mothman, all the evidence points to Mothman not existing. My final verdict on Mothman is that he does not exist, and never did exist. Scientific evidence, eyewitness accounts, and logic all points to Mothman being nothing but a case of misidentification, hoaxing, and media hype. The fact Mothman's body proportions are physically impossible and the fact no physical evidence of the creature remains are two of the largest factors in its not existence. Its resemblance to known animals in the same region also points to it just being a case of misidentification. The large amount of hoaxes, inconsistencies such as difference in colors, and copycat fake sightings also adds to the proof that Mothman is nothing but media hype centered on only a few true cases. I truly believe the first sightings by Roger and Linda and the other couple were actually true. But I believe they saw a known animal, a species of owl, probably either a barn owl or a barred owl. Also, the evidence of a rather large snowy owl, uncommon in the region, which was shot and killed later after the sighting, also suggests that the Mothman was probably just this large snowy owl that wandered into the region. The few true eyewitness accounts were taken in bad conditions, as they were all in the dark and most were in moving vehicles, only seeing a quick partial image of the creature in the dark. The shine of the headlights and flashlights caused eye shining on the owl's eyes, giving its appearance as if they were glowing. The original sightings also over-exaggerated the size of the owl, and misidentified it as a scary monster seen by scared teenagers in the night, simply due to the quick flash of an image. 
What followed next was simply media hype and later fictional copycat accounts, which all ended when the media hype focused on the bridge collapse, blaming Mothman and claiming it disappeared when it never appeared in the first place. Mothman is nothing but a species of owl which was misidentified on that dark, scary night in 1966. World-renowned cryptozoologist Joe Nickel has made this same conclusion, and after seeing all the evidence, I agree. So my final thoughts on Mothman? Not real. Case closed, people. Oh, and for those that say Mothman is a chemical mutant, that's not how mutations work. They don't cause an animal to grow three times as tall, they don't cause them to develop glowing red eyes, and they also don't allow them to live it to maturity. That's just Hollywood and comic books for you. In reality, gigantism caused by mutagens results in cancer, malnutrition, and kills basically all that suffer from it in the wild, at least. And they definitely wouldn't be able to fly due to the mutated weight. Not to mention, gigantism doesn't change the heart and circulatory system. The body might change, but the heart stays the same, resulting in many, many heart problems, resulting in premature death. And also, not to mention, the mutated weight would affect the animal's ability to fly greatly. Most people don't know how much of a balanced bird flight really is. So no chemical mutants. Okay, thanks for watching my first cryptid profile. Tell me what you thought. Do you think Mothman really existed? Tell me if I should continue this series. Next time I plan on examining another big hoot, the Flatwoods Monster, another West Virginian cousin of Mothman, and one with a very interesting history. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Trey the Explainer, and have a great day.